High street retailers are in a war. They're in a war with the convenience of online and out-of-town centre shopping. They understand that their unique USP is the shopping experience. But many high streets have a battle on seeking to provide the infrastructure required for the retailers with their own capacity issues, and more importantly, the impact this has upon their historic city centres. A prime example of this is the city of Oxford, and this is a story of how they sought to overcome it with the redevelopment of the Westgate Centre. As well as being home to one of the most famous universities in the world, Oxford is a vibrant city of commerce, industry and culture. But its retail offering has been hampered in previous decades by its medieval street layout, its diverse land ownership and its historic buildings. The redevelopment of the Westgate Centre sought to provide an antidote to this issue, but it was an issue that took nearly 30 years to resolve. Westgate is at the west end of Queen Street facing onto Bond Square. The west gate into the city of Oxford stood at the adjacent junction at Castle Street, Norfolk Street and Paradise Street until the mid-17th century, having stood there since the Saxon period. And the shopping centre is named after this former gateway into the city. The site is bordered by Bond Square, Castle Street, Norfolk Street, Oxpens Road, Old Greyfair Street, Roger Bacon Lane and St Ebb Street and is adjacent to the medieval Oxford Castle Quarter to the northwest. In addition to 30,000 students, the city is home to more than 200,000 residents with a further 130,000 across the wider metropolitan area and welcomes 9.5 million tourists annually. The existing Westgate shopping centre was opened following a period during the 1960s when much of the St Ebb Street area of the city was cleared. Its development provided 34,600 square metres of gross external floor space for retailing, plus the central library, some offices and 14 residential units served by a particularly shabby multi-storey car park. In 1988 proposals were brought forward for the extension of the Westgate centre on the multi-storey and surface car park, failing planning due to a lack of agreement with surrounding landowners and the immediate impact on surrounding streets. Twelve years later, another planning application for a similar development was made, which despite a public inquiry, Secretary of State calling and a High Court challenge failed to produce a planning decision by 2003. Fresh dialogue was instead held with the Council by Westgate Partnership in 2005, with a new application submitted in 2006. The 2006 application covered a site of 14 acres and related to land allocated for the purposes in the adopted 2005 Oxford Local Plan. It involved the demolition of part of the existing shopping centre and multi-storey car park, plus the Duke of York Public House, properties at Abbey Place and part of the Oxford and Cherwell Valley College site. Constructed in their place will be 60 retail units and a department store for John Lewis, plus 127 residential flats and a new replacement multi-storey car park. The development gained planning permission in 2007, but with the banking crisis and downturn in the national economy was not proceeded with. Rather, a fresh dialogue was entered into, ultimately leading to the existing scheme, first permitted in 2013. The proposals were developed by the Westgate Oxford Alliance, a partnership between land securities and the Crown Estate. The Alliance worked closely with Oxford City Council and Oxfordshire County Council to unlock the potential of this important but tricky redevelopment site. Four different architects were responsible for distinct blocks of the scheme to reflect Oxford's divisive architecture and were encouraged to draw inspiration from the surrounding area. They all worked closely with master planners BDP who evolved the initial concept. In terms of design reference and inspiration, many of the architects sought reference in the Bodleian Library, the evocative oak panelling associated with many of the college's historic dining halls, together with typical Oxfordian colonnades. In terms of public space, reference was given over to Campion Hall on nearby Brewer Street, with the priority given over to community engagement. Many of the existing public spaces within Oxford lie behind inaccessible historic quads. So by bringing forward new streets and two new spaces of public realm, community engagement sought to be delivered across the year. The application site abuts the central city and university conservation area, a designated heritage asset, and the development will be visible in views across, into and out of the conservation area. It was therefore necessary to consider the nature and extent of impacts the proposal would have on the conservation area and the designated heritage assets within it. The planning application was of archaeological interest because it resulted in substantial harm to the below ground remains of Oxford's medieval Franciscan Friary, an asset that though not a scheduled ancient monument can be considered to be of national significance. The application also had the potential to impact on prehistoric, Roman, late Saxon, Norman, post-medieval and 19th century remains of interest. The area illustrates in a fragmented way a number of historical processes. Late Saxon town planning, medieval worship, Victorian and Edwardian industry, commerce and remembrance. 
The quality of the public realm, however, its appearance and character were heavily compromised by the original Westgate Centre and its multi-storey and surface car parks. The proposed development seeks to knit the development into a framework of the city with cross streets reconnecting historic street patterns truncated by the current Westgate Centre. Oxford had lost status in comparison to many of its retail rivals, ranging well below them in terms of the quality and services it provided. Lost opportunities for income and employment were felt across the period as cities such as Swindon, Reading and Milton Keynes expanded their retail offering. The lack of atypical high street anchors such as House of Fraser and John Lewis within Oxford keenly represented the lack of quality the retail offer had to provide. The Oxford Civic Society had raised concerns about increased traffic congestion as the development would alter public highways and priority bus routes. Organisations including the Oxford Architectural and Historical Society had issues with how the height and scale of development would impact on city views. Nonetheless, outline planning permission was granted in 2014 with reserve matters approved in the December. Main contractor Lango Rourke began work in January 2015 and its 30-month contract encompassed the construction of the new elements which were predominantly sat atop a 1,000 space underground car park. The original mall was partly demolished, leaving approximately three quarters of the three-storey structure to be integrated into the new scheme. The development opened its doors in October 2017. The centre brings forward 74,000 square metres of mixed-use development, including a flagship John Lewis store, a further 100 retail stores, a five-screen cinema, a rooftop terrace providing views over Oxford City Centre, 1,100 basement car parking spaces, two public squares and 59 residential apartments. Entrance to the centre is provided via Bond Square and in particular the partly pedestrianised area of Queen Street. Here the original entrance is replaced by a huge curving stone facade, one that provides direct access through to the Northern Arcade, Building 4, and is a serious piece of urban design in its own right, harking back to the city arcades of the 19th century. More importantly, the entrance successfully integrates the shopping centre with the city centre. North Arcade is terminated by Middle Square, flanked by two larger shops and a supermarket, which is followed by the more conventional mall space of South Arcade, Building 3, with a broad gallery and bridges at first floor level, covered at a high level by a glazed roof so it feels spacious and flooded with daylight. At the far end of the mall, Leading Square opens to the right, still under the high glazed roof, with the John Lewis Building, Building 1, enclosing the West End, with the final building, Building 2, completing the complex to the south. Escalators lead to the third level roof terrace with restaurants and the cinema, as well as good views over the city. From the outside, the mall is predictably large in comparison to the scale of surrounding buildings and spaces. The impact of the elevations is softened on Speedwell Street through the introduction of facing brickwork and detail of irregular windows, both real and false, that attempts to humanise the elevation into its surroundings. On the eastern and west elevation, there is a juxtaposition between the original vertical rhythm of the concrete detailing of the old mall and the introduction of contemporary construction. When the original centre was built in the 1970s, excavations for the service basements destroyed archaeological remains of part of medieval Oxford. During the 2015-2017 redevelopment, Oxford Archaeology, working in conjunction with the developers and contractors, carried out archaeological investigations into the extensive remains of medieval Greyfairs Friary with stone foundations, wooden and other artefacts, and part of a medieval tiled floor being discovered. The tiled floor is now on display in the centre, and a pop-up exhibition of the findings were displayed around the city across the period. Westgate Oxford is one of the lowest carbon retail destinations in the country. It cuts emissions by installing one of the largest examples of centralised air source heating of its kind in the UK. Using this technology to deliver heating and cooling to shops and restaurants avoids the use of natural gas, keeps costs down for retailers and reduces reliance on fossil fuels. The new centre is rated BRIAM excellent for sustainability and a vitally important factor in a city determined to play its part in the climate change battle. Delivering Westgate has contributed £738 million towards the gross economic value of the area. It's contributed £4.2 million towards local infrastructure and contributed 3,500 full-time equivalent jobs. It's done so whilst contributing towards the architectural integrity of the area. Care and attention has been paid towards the delivery of the shopping centre, therefore contributing towards the shopping experience required by retailers. But has such a retail offer been brought forward in a manner that contributes and protects the historic integrity of the area? It takes something special to deliver the UK's most sustainable shopping centre in a manner that respects the layout and listed buildings of its medieval city. It's been a long time coming, but the development has proved an overwhelming success.